Um, so I'm really pleased to uh, introduce our PhD student, Caroline Krapsik. Um, is, is this a milestone pre presentation or is this just a yeah, one? Yeah, it's my, for my mid-candidature review. Mid-candidature review presentation. Yeah. Okay, um, swearing in multicultural Australia. Uh, so welcome, Caroline, from Germany. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hi. Um, I hope uh, you're all doing well in lockdown uh, if you're in Melbourne. Um, uh, for me, it hasn't really affected me. I, I had to work a lot to prepare this and other things. So, But I hope you're doing well and um, I'm very happy you're here. And uh, yeah, let's get right into it. Um, squaring. Uh, why squaring? Oops. Uh, well, swearing is, uh, has a long cultural history in Australia and is commonly perceived uh, as a characteristic, 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 <coughs> sorry, <coughs> characteristic feature of Australian English. And uh, to prove that, uh, that this is uh, the case, I constantly collect uh, examples of swearing in Australian daily life, both in real life and online. And here are some of my most recent examples. Uh, this is an ad for bloody comfy period undies sold by the underwear brand Bonds, and that is, that is what they're called. Um, and uh, here is some art from an Aboriginal artist named Kate James uh, of the Wadawurrung people, I think, and that I just recently saw last month in Ballarat in uh, the art gallery there. So this is Captain Cook or Captain Siwa. <laughs> uh, she has a lot of those uh, in there with lots of swearing. Um, oh, Stephen seems to be back. Okay, good. Um, this is an ad for a party uh, that you can see all around the CBD and also in Paran where I live. This is right next to the train station. I see that every time I take the train. So apparently you can go to cloud nine every fucking Sunday. Um, uh, this is a screenshot of a TikTok uh, where someone filmed a sign inside a shop in Sydney uh, proclaiming that Scott Morrison is a useless dickhead um, because of the lockdown and not buying enough vaccines and things. Um, and here I have a video uh, of the uh, recent, or oh, it's been a couple of weeks already, uh, Women's March, uh, uh, who were uh, chanting um, at uh, Scott Morrison in view also of the uh, rape cases in the uh, parliament recently and the scandal. So I'm going to play this little video for you so you can hear the women chant and also see their uh, lovely signs that include a lot of swearing. <laughs> Yeah, so lovely chant there. So you can see swearing is alive and well in Australia. And um, yeah, um, <clears throat> I um, look, I want to look at swearing at, and ethnicity in my research. And uh, to talk about this, I want to go back a little bit in history um, because um, the prominent use of swearing goes back to British and Irish working class slang and dialect speech that was dominant during the early colonial settlement. And up until the first half of the 20th century, immigrants predominantly came from Britain and Ireland. Uh, but this changed after uh, World War II as Australia opens its, uh, its doors to immigrants from Europe and Asia, becoming more ethnically and linguistically diverse. And this is where my research sort of sets in. And because uh, today Australia is in fact, uh, one of the most ethnically diverse countries in the world, according to uh, census data. Uh, and the census from uh, 2016 actually says that there are over 300 different non-indigenous ancestries uh, found nowadays in Australia. So um, I think, um, 
Considering how multicultural Australia has become, it is worth investigating swearing in Australian English from an ethnolinguistic perspective. And that is why I ask these research questions. Um, do Australians swear differently depending on their ethnic background? Uh, do uh, use and attitudes towards swearing evolve from first to second or third generation? What is it like with P for people who have been here for many generations? Um, is, is there a point where like swearing usage becomes the same, uh, uh, like the same as people who have been here for many generations? Uh, that's something I'm interested in. And can we argue that, in fact, swearing is really a characteristic feature among Australians, no matter what the ethnic background is? Um, I'm not so sure about that. Um, the thing is, in the research, it often is just said, yeah, swearing is common in Australia, but um, I want to really go in, into, the, um, into the deep here and see uh, the differences um, and see... Um, what uh, more can be said about this. And I don't think, uh, as, uh, as far as I'm aware, there is any other research that has been done on swearing and ethnicity in Australian English so far. So uh, what's been mostly done was more focused on selected vocabulary or describing the general functions of swearing. Um, Kate Burridge and Keith Allen have done great work on that. Um, uh, but and my aim for this research is to really provide an in-depth description of Australian swearing as best as I can and uh, investigate especially the effect of ethnicity on attitudes and usage. And I'm also interested in whether uh, swearing might be a part of Australian identity that um, Australians um, want to claim uh, for their personal individually individual identity um, or whether they don't uh, identify with that or as part of their Australian identity. Uh, yes, um, so uh, what is swearing? Um, uh, a lot of you might have already seen pre previous presentations by me, so I'm keeping the that section short. Basically, uh, what I've come up with is that swearing has to make reference literally or non literally uh, to something that is considered taboo in society. And it often involves some kind of expression of emotion, but doesn't necessarily have to. So taboo can be a lot of things, uh, all sorts of um, religious terms, but also body parts, um, even, uh, I, notions of death or dirt or, um, I don't know, um, yeah, certain behaviors or intellect uh, deficiencies <laughs> or that people ascribe to other people. Uh, so there's lots of different taboos. Um, and uh, for my study, I have developed um, the met uh, methodology in which I'm trying to... Uh, um, oh yeah, that, oh no, that's the next slide, sorry. Um, uh, okay, I'll talk about this first. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so for, in, for my methodology, uh, I'm trying to mostly recruit people from Melbourne and the wider Victoria area, but I have already also gotten some people from other states. Uh, I might in the end uh, end up comparing and see if there's any differences based on state. Uh, if I get enough participants, but the, the goal is to get mostly people from Melbourne and Victoria. And uh, um, when it comes to the ethnicities, um, I have actually uh, made the conscious decision to choose Anglo-Celtic, Chinese and Italian Australians. And uh, that is uh, uh, a choice. Uh, that provides me with um, groups from several different migration vintages. Um, so um, there are descendants of Italians who migrated post-World War II and Chinese migrants who arrived in the 1980s or 1990s or whose families have even been here longer. There's lots of Chinese uh, 
who can trace back their family lines to um, the gold rush, uh, rushes and uh, yeah, other uh, yeah, <clears throat> settlement <clears throat> prospects that brought Australia uh, Chinese here uh, for business and yeah, <clears throat> uh, fortune. And uh, I'm also looking at um, uh, more recent migrants in both ethnic groups, Italians and Chinese, as well as Anglo-Celtics, because um, there's still like there's still the largest migrant group nowadays is still from uh, the UK and Ireland, uh, even though the Chinese are growing rapidly in numbers um, and catching up. Uh, yeah, so it, I'm looking at first generation, second, third, and longer, and I'm trying to compare and see if there's any development differences. Um, and then um, I think uh, this really uh, reflects uh, the complexity of Melbourne's uh, super diverse migrant situation. So uh, super diverse would mean in order to analyze a uh, a community like in Melbourne or uh, ethnic communities in Melbourne, uh, you have to consider that they are themselves diverse and need to be micro specified in order to make uh, any, any uh, inferences about the individuals in those groups. So uh, in order to tackle that, to go into this uh, super diversity, um, I have designed uh, a research <clears throat> methodology that completes, uh, consists of three parts. I have an online survey, I'm doing interviews, and I'm having people record themselves with family, friends, and coworkers. So I have three points from which I'm looking at uh, the swearing. Uh, the online survey uh, is there to have people self-report on what they use, what they think they use, uh, and that addresses uh, functions of swearing, morphosyntax, are they, that meaning are they creative with swear words, what forms of swear words do they use, uh, how do they combine words, which, are, which forms are prominent, um, who do they swear with, um, under which circumstances, and how do their, uh, uh, the variables that you see on the left there influence those uh, choices? Um, uh, I'm collecting a lot of variables. Um, I'm look, uh, of course, age, gender, but also their sexual orientation, um, which I'm going to go into a little bit later, uh, is relevant for uh, terms that uh, relate to like um, homophobic slurs, for instance. Um, and uh, um, of course, I'm looking at ethnicity and uh, the languages that they speak and understand. So um, uh, as you saw earlier, I include in my Chinese uh, group, both uh, Cantonese and Mandarin speakers. So mainland China and uh, Hong Kong and other Cantonese speaking areas. And in fact, so far I have a lot of, um, overlap between these. Uh, so um, while they are dominant in either one of the of the two languages, usually they are sort of uh, also more or less proficient or have basic knowledge of the other and also other dialects. Um, I'm also recording that on a side on the side. Um, yeah, so uh, I also record people's religion, the education level, the occupation, the social class they grew up in, uh, and what migrant generation they are, of course. And um, yeah, uh, up there you see some of the aspects that I'm looking into uh, in general, so mostly gender differences, but I'm also looking at, at euphemism as sort of uh, uh, a counter strategy towards swearing and um, the lexicon that is uh, used and the attitudes and uh, general frequency of swearing. Uh, yeah, so when it comes to the uh, methodology here again, so the online survey, 
uh, is supposed to be mostly uh, quantitative, but I'm also collecting qualitative data there. Um, people have lots of space to provide comments. And uh, I'm hoping to get at least 300 surveys, maybe more. With the interviews, I'm hoping to get about 24 or more. Uh, that breaks down to um, yeah, equal amounts of um, younger and older speakers and oops. Um, and in within the these uh, three ethnic groups. So um, that's why that's a specific number. And in the interviews, I talk about um, people's experience with swearing throughout their life, the attitudes towards it. And um, uh, when it comes to Chinese and Italians, as also I talk about whether they swear in their other languages or uh, uh, whether uh, Italian or uh, Chinese language is their first or second language or their bilingual uh, to see um, if they have similar attitudes to swearing in those, to, in those languages as in English or whether they prefer one and why and um, yeah. <clears throat> That is something that I'm looking into as well. And with the group recordings, I'm having people record themselves in private. And uh, I don't really have a set number for that. I'm trying to get as many different uh, recordings as I can. I've already gotten some pretty interesting ones. Some uh, people recorded, some students recorded themselves during uh, video gaming and I got family conversations over dinner uh, or also some road rage driving <laughs> recordings. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about the data. And here is what I'm uh, currently at with my data collection. Uh, um, I'm not as far as I would like to be uh, thanks to COVID, but um, I'm trying my best. And right now I have uh, 103 out of 300 surveys completed and uh, mostly uh, Anglo-Celtics, less Italian and Chinese. Um, so I'm more focused on recruiting those at the moment. And I have a wide age range. Uh, people have to be uh, 18 or over, but I also have people in their 80s, 70s, uh, also in the interview section, which I, I'm very happy about. And I got some really interesting interviews already. And um, um, uh, what you can see from this overall is that I have more women uh, than men in my data in general, uh, especially um, um, for the survey. Um, this is something that is important. I have uh, way more females in the uh, Italian group um, and also in the Chinese group. Um, and it would be Anglo-Celtics, it's a bit more balanced, uh, but that is something that uh, you need to keep in mind when I'm uh, going to present the, uh, my results in a minute. So um, yeah, let me go back a little bit. Um, I also uh, have uh, a number of mixed uh, participants that are ethnically mixed, so either Anglo-Celtic and Italian mixed together or Anglo-Celtic and Chinese mixed. Um, um, I'm not looking into these at the moment, but later on I will try to see where they pattern, sort of with which group. Um, and um, I am quite happy that I have already 18 interviews but I need considerably more. So if you know any Chinese or Italians, <laughs> maybe <laughs> ask them. Uh, it's not easy to recruit, uh, especially Chinese. Okay, uh, yeah, so let's get into the, uh, some of the results that I have already. Uh, this is a selection. I'm not going to go into everything. Uh, it is mostly going to be from the survey but I'm also going to talk a little bit about what people said in interviews and uh, how the group recordings, uh, yeah, what the group recordings are like. <laughs> and I have some examples as well. 
So yeah, again, uh, before we go into the results, uh, the uh, survey um, participants, um, maybe I have to explain a little bit further so you can understand and the, the results a little bit more, like see them in the right light. So um, what's important as well is that uh, while the Anglo-Celtics and Italians are mostly Australian born, uh, or have migrated here as children. Uh, in the Chinese uh, section, I have quite a few people who migrated here as adults, and uh, that uh, is, might have a significant influence on their answers. Um, uh, from the interviews, I've learned from a couple of them that they have issues interpreting the meaning of swearing um, or the intention, whether it is uh, swearing is meant uh, humorously or aggressively, they have trouble. So they sort of, they don't really know how to use it and um, don't really know how to react to some of the swearing if they're um, adult migrants. Um, but uh, all of these uh, adult migrants that I have have been in the country at least 10 years, some longer, but they still have issues, um, yeah, interpreting swearing correctly. And um, yeah, so that is just something that I want you to keep in mind when looking at the, at the data, at the results. Um, okay, uh, let's get into it. So the first section um, is about, um, attitudes towards swearing. So uh, we can see here that on average, um, the, um, yeah, the participants don't really have an issue with swearing. Uh, quite a few enjoy swearing. Um, they vary a bit on whether swearing should be generally avoided or not. And there's a little bit of variation there. Um, but generally, uh, the answers seem to be indicating that generally swearing is more or less accepted. And um, for some people, it is even an important part of their speaking style. So, um, uh, when we look into the differences between the uh, ethnic groups, we can see that they're not significant, but uh, except for, and, and I enjoy swearing, we can see that uh, apparently the Anglo-Celtics uh, enjoy swearing most, uh, and then it gradually uh, descends uh, and uh, goes down to sort of, yeah, I don't agree with that, or I'm not sure to the Chinese who said, think maybe swearing should be avoided more generally, and they don't really engage in that, in that that much. That is also in agreement with what I've heard in the interviews, that uh, the interviews I've talked to were, um, I had four Chinese, three of them were most, were, um, uh, adult migrants, uh, but have been in the country quite long, and one was born here. And uh, the adult migrants say they they take no issue with the swearing here in Australia. They've come to accept it, uh, but uh, they don't engage in it with uh, themselves. And they also don't really swear in in Chinese either. So um, maybe a little bit, but um, sort of the same policy, and that's how they were raised. Um, yeah, so, um, so much for the attitudes. Um, and uh, let's get into frequency. Um, I asked people how often they think they swear. Obviously, it's hard to estimate, but um, 24% said they swear at least once a day, and 49% said um, they swear several times a day. Out of those several times a day, um, I had people ask um, 
to estimate how often in a day. And uh, I've got a large arrange, uh, array of answers, most varied sort of between five to 20 times a day, that was their estimate. But there were also a few who said really frequently, so every five sentences, um, very regularly all the fucking time. <laughs> Um, and uh, again, we see some differences here uh, with Italians and Chinese in comparison to Anglo-Celtics. Uh, the Italians put more five times a day um, um, or lower numbers, but also some put most sentences, so also quite a bit of variation there. While the Chinese mostly stuck to five to 15 times a day, depending. Um, yeah, on the day who they're talking to. Um, that is something that a lot of people obviously made uh, clear in the comment section that they had available to them, um, that it varies very much, depends very much on the situation, on the context. And that is something that uh, I also got into in, in another question. Um, but first let's talk about uh, functions of swearing. Uh, I developed this list of uh, functions of swearing uh, based on uh, previous um, research on swearing, um, for instance, by Trutgill uh, or uh, <coughs> Allen and Burridge, uh, Keith Allen and Kate Burridge. And um, basically the first one, letting off steam, uh, is something when you, when you sort of like hit your thumb with a hammer or you drop something and you swear, but you don't really address it to anyone. You don't direct it at anybody. So just to yourself to kind of, yeah, let off the, the steam, the energy. And um, there's something that seems to be uh, quite frequent uh, along with expressing negative emotions. Uh, I had an, <clears throat> examples there given to them like saying like oh fucking hell why is this happening oh. um, least frequent seems to be abusing or insulting somebody right directly to their face uh, and that is something that everyone seems to be agreeing on and another frequent uh use of swearing is to just kind of spice of converse spice up conversation a little bit make it a little bit fun, entertaining, int more interesting. Uh, um, yeah. And um, here we can see how this these different functions uh, pattern within the ethnic groups. Uh, I put in here the examples that I provided the participants with. Um, uh, um, and uh, we can sort of see that the Anglo Celtics appear to swear more frequently in most ways, while the Chinese uh, seem to engage in all forms of swearing less frequently than the Anglo Celtics and Italians. And um, direct abuse appears to be generally infrequent, something that uh, people don't really um, seem to uh, like to engage in. And um, when it comes to context, um, that is what something that participants were very adamant about, context matters. Um, and um, I provided them with these uh, contexts here. And um, what we can see is that uh, it seems, uh, unsurprisingly to me, um, people swear mostly with their friends or siblings. Um, I have an example here from um, an Italian, uh, two Italian cousins uh, who sort of are like siblings with each other. Uh, and I think it illustrates nicely, um, yeah, their closeness and how they talk to each other in a casual way. So I'm gonna start playing this. 
It was, it's just one kangaroo, by the way. Mm. Nothing else. Just one fucking well, kangaroo. That's worse, because, like, if there's a bunch of them, you usually see none him. of them will jump out. But if there's one of them, he means he's, like, trying to get back somewhere. He's trying to find his crew. Yeah. I respect the man. <laughs> respect the drip. Respect the drip, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. It's just kind of fucked. I, I, I felt really bad. And then, obviously, like, Laura hitting the kangaroo earlier. It was already dead, because apparently someone had hit it before her. Mm. I ran over a fox the other day. Yeah, but they're but pests. Already, fuck them. Like, it was already dead. You know? But pests, fuck them. Yeah, but it's like, you run over tons of stuff, like, if it's in that spot on the road, you can't avoid it sometimes. Yeah, I, the mum said she got really mad one time because someone ran over a bird. Yeah, I think there was at least five times uh, fuck in there. Uh, all from one speaker, though. Mm. Um, but that, yeah, it was an Italian example. <clears throat> and um, I have a lot more like this, but I think one is not enough for now. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so um, what we can see here with the context is that um, it seems that um, there's general agreement not to swear in front of grandparents as well as in formal situations and to sort of keep low on the swearing on social media and in public spaces, as well as at work. And um, again, Anglo-Celtics seem to swear more frequently than Italians and Italians more frequently than Chinese with all of these uh, people or in these situations. Um, yeah. It's, it's just one Oh no, that's not what I wanted, okay. Yeah, the, here is a, a list of swear words. I provided participants with a list of swear words um, that I came up of, uh, with based on yeah, previous research and um, uh, yeah, reading and lots of other sources. And it seems that um, shit and fuck are the most frequent and uh, followed by other terms that are more religiously based. So although some people said in the interviews they don't consider these words swear words, as well as bloody is not a swear word in lots of people's opinions. And neither is crap, or at least only a very mild one. And uh, sort of at the bottom, we can see that the uh, racist or homophobic uh, or sexist swear words are um, all on, on never, like on the never point of the scale. So um, this is just the, the average. Uh, of, uh, there is some use of those if you look into the data, but, but relatively little. And especially when it comes to fag and faggot, uh, we can see that um, the use that is recorded is uh, uh, <coughs> Uh, yeah, by by queer people who use it in sort of a humorous way or term of endearment. Um, but uh, that is only actually only 23% of the uh, 35 queer participants in my study. The majority don't use it. Um, but those who do uh, use it in, in this kind of way. Uh, but it also varies within those quite significantly um, and then we have the racist terms here that I also want to get into a little bit. Um, walk um, is generally not used very much by Anglo-Celtics and Chinese, but a little bit more frequent by Italians and seems to be more common among younger generations. I've had a couple of Italian interviewees who also said that they use it as a term of endearment amongst each other. Uh, so one interview said that uh, she, when she meets with her Italian friends from high school, back high school, um, they said, oh, we're going to do woggy things today. <laughs> so, but uh, all the Italians that I've talked to who have actually experienced discrimination with this word um, are not so, uh, don't use it uh, to self-identify. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Um, okay, let's get to the last uh, part uh, 
that I want to talk about uh, offensiveness. Um, um, I provided participants with a list of uh, swear words that I asked them to rate uh, on a scale from not offensive to very strong. And uh, they were, there was no context. They had to rate them without context. And then I followed this question with another question where all of these words were put into contexts. And uh, the purpose of this was to um, see um, what kind of general um, taboo level they assign to certain swear words, whether the, some of these swear words have sort of like an inherent level of offensiveness and how that might change depending on the specific context that they're in. Uh, as we can see again, racist, homophobic and sexist uh, terms are deemed most offensive and hence not used uh, very much. Uh, as we saw before, um, it seems that all groups agree that uh, agree on the use of or the offensiveness of uh, the, the n-word, crap and bugger all. And curious, curiously, we have we see here that somehow the homophobic terms faggot and homo are perceived as less offensive by the Chinese. I'm wondering whether they are maybe not familiar with these words, uh, considering there's a significant amount of adult migrants in the Chinese group and the Chinese adult migrants that I interviewed did say that they, they sometimes don't understand the words, are not familiar with it. Maybe that is a reason or there's another reason. Um, um, yeah, and um, yeah, the C word bitch and fuck seems slightly more offensive to Italians and Chinese than to the Anglo Celtics. Uh, okay, now let's see uh, one word uh, uh, with context. Uh, that is the word fuck, of course. Uh, I have two examples. This one is the first. Um, it is uh, two commentators comment commenting on a Sydney Swan versus Western Bulldogs AFL game. And let's uh, let's hear it. Body tackled by Morris. Oh! Dropping the ball. Boyd took the advantage and played on from inside the centre square. Boyd's kicked the goal. Boyd's oh! kicked the goal from inside the centre. <laughs> 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 yeah. <clears throat> Uh, in this example, um, participants on average judged uh, it not offenses, not offensive or mild. There were a few who judged it uh, strong. Uh, those were mostly Chinese, to be honest, um, uh, because it is on TV. But I also got uh, comments in the in the survey that of a few people who said that it was absolutely not. Um, inappropriate and there was one person who had actually attended that game and said uh, that was the only uh, correct response to that outcome, to that goal. It was like the uh, apparently a really, really significant, insanely good goal. So <laughs> everyone in the audience apparently was screaming fuck. Uh, so um, and then I have this second example of a case of road rage. Um, uh, warning, there's a lot of fuck as you can see. Fuck me drunk. I just almost had a head on crash. This cunt, this fucking, this fuckwit in a fucking tradie you just come fucking screaming through the roundabout, lost control, went onto the fucking gravel. And fucking come fucking scre skidding fucking sideways, locked up straight towards me head on. I just fucking swerved and fucking dodged him. Yeah, fucking Christ. Oh, it was almost a big crash. I fucking, if I hadn't have swerved out of the way, I reckon it would have been a fucking great crash. Yeah. <clears throat> um, people were a bit uh, divided on that on average. The average uh, is moderate, but when we look at individual perception of this uh, example, it varied quite a lot from not offensive at all 
people who found it humorous to people who found it very offensive. And that also varied within the ethnic groups considerably. So you can't really say that one ethnic group judge should. It really depends on personal attitude. Um, so uh, originally we saw that, uh, whoops, uh, Fuck seems to be uh, somewhere in between not offensive, mild to very strong, uh, or no, too strong. Um, and in these examples, um, it already varied. I had more examples, but um, I'm not going to go into that because um, I'm running out of time and uh, I figured I would be. So this is uh, all that I had to show for, uh, for offensiveness. Um, yeah, lastly, some general observations that I'd like to make. Um, there is a sort of an emerging pattern um, uh, where um, frequency or acceptance of swearing uh, is sort of descending from Anglo-Celtics to Italians to Chinese. So Anglo-Celtics seem to be more frequently swearing, more accepting of swearing, less uh, offended <laughs> by swearing than Italians, and then in turn, Italians uh, less uh, offended or more accepting of swearing than Chinese. At least the ones I have, maybe this pattern will change once I get more Australian-born Chinese and more um, male uh, Italian participants. But this is where I'm at right now. And uh, yeah, as I said already, first generation Chinese adult migrants uh, report having difficulty judging the intention of swearing and getting it right. And um, a lot of the first generation migrants, uh, both uh, Italians and Chinese that I've interviewed, some sort of say that they've come to accept swearing as part of Australian life. They don't mind it, even if uh, they personally don't engage in it. Uh, some do, some don't, um, but generally they most don't really have an issue with it. Um, um, and um, when it comes to, to identity, um, it varies quite a bit. Um, um, it is really uh, depending on the individual. Um, I've had people say that they consider swearing as part of their Australian identity. They swear a lot, they love to swear, um, but I've also had people who really want to challenge the, the stereotype of Australians as big swearers because they personally don't swear a lot. And that is, was the case with young Anglo-Celtic Australians as well as um, older Italian Australians or uh, Chinese. Um, so all across the board, it really depends more on your personal uh, upbringing, I think. Um, and yeah, just your personality. Um, and um, what I found interesting, um, many, uh, in the, I had a couple of very devout Christians uh, some in their 80s, also younger ones, who all didn't really think that the religion played a role in uh, their use of swearing or not use of swearing. They were more concerned with uh, the social class that what they were brought up in and by the, the, the social class that they sort of um, yeah, live in now based on their education and occupation. Um, so, um, even the 80 year olds that I interviewed who, uh, go to Bible study weekly and were very devout Christians said they swear in, in their Bible study and, uh, they use words that they don't consider swearing, for instance, like words like, uh, bloody crap or bullshit. <laughs> that is something that most interviewees and also survey participants seem to agree on that these words are not really swear words. It's been pointed out, uh, especially bloody, uh, that is not a swear word apparently, or it's only considered like a really mild one at best. 
and um, a lot of participants, uh, both interviews and surveys, survey participants seem to draw a line between swear words and slurs. So when they say they like to swear, they swear a lot, they distinctly make the point that that doesn't include racial or homophobic slurs and they don't consider that swearing and they would not use that. So um, swearing is something that they think can be positive, is positive, but the slurs are only negative in their view. So they don't want it to be considered as swearing. And yeah, I think that's an interesting point. Um, yeah, I think that was my last point. So um, thank you for your attention and I'm open for a question. Um, I might stop my share now or should I keep it on? <clears throat> Yeah, uh, I, I have a I have a question or a, an observation. I, I thought it was fascinating and 